But welcome to episode 5 of the Therese Podcast. Uh, I'm joined by a very special guest today. Uh, the man who turned me into the cynical asshole that I am, Harry's Moving Castle. Hello. Uh, n- nice. Thanks for coming on again. Uh, <laughs> that's, that that introduction was no exaggeration. You were li- literally the first channel that made me look at media more critically. So if you want anyone to blame for my existence, then there you go. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I never thought that um, I would be spawning mini channels just from random volunteers. But then at the same time, I probably, if I ever had the chance to say hello to Your Movie Sucks, who's one of my uh, main uh, influencers, um, I probably would have given uh, an arm and a leg to speak to him at the time when I was just starting out. But yeah. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, it is a real pleasure because it's kind. Of, that's the kind of the weird thing about YouTube. You never expect for anyone to actually watch you, and then you get people saying stuff about how you inspired them, and it's kind of bizarre. Oh yeah, and absolutely. I'm it's, it's, it now I'm like, re- really, one big waterfall of thank yous, just continuously. Yeah. You just got sort of yeah. It's like it's almost like an evolutionary like chain. Because obviously you mm. started with your movie sex and then you got inspired from that and then I got inspired from that and then you know people are getting inspired from me so it's sort of a downward spiral. <laughs> a downward spiral, yeah, <laughs> yeah. of influence. Channel gets progressively worse. Like, <clears throat> oh no. But um, first thing I wanted to ask you was just like how you started on YouTube and um, started this basically. Oh, well, basically, um, my, well, my, f- like, I've been making on and off gaming videos for a while, probably since, like, I, I think I'm sure I started experimenting with Fraps in about 2012 and just wanting to be every other gaming channel ever yeah. at one point. And I just loved Dark Souls to death and just decided to make a bunch of content based off of that and because that wasn't yielding any particular interest in terms of audience i thought okay i'm just going to try something else now and um i had to i had to be i had to raise my voice about uh doctor who's sort of never-ending decrease in quality and um i honestly felt like i was the only one that seemed to really care about the direction of the show at the time like you know back in 2014 and it was just one big echo chamber and then suddenly when um by the time series 10 had all finished and that was like the first the the finale of that reached about a hundred thousand views so from there it was just like okay there's just so many people that want to watch this kind of critical content i think and um it's nice as well because like it it feels like a big kind of middle finger to all the um to what i would like to call what has happened to doctor who confidential because everything that they release that's like a side product of the show now is so it's just absolute garbage like the never got anything critical to say even like if they do have some kind of um problem or like uh concern they'll never air it and it'll always be very awkward if there is any issue which yeah 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 because we saw that with um uh obviously the fan show that that was around yes uh that was always positive i never saw any critical thinking on that and i think there's also a part of it where you sort of see an element of yourselves in the creators that you watch like Mm. there's a part of you that thinks yeah i agree with this i can imagine myself saying this or having this view you know um Mm. and you're and i suppose as a person you're kind of reflected in the content that you watch in a sense so oh yeah definitely i think i've now just become the doctor who you uh doctor who black mirror experience basically and uh, it's yeah. it's kind of annoying because whenever i try and do anything else no one gives a shit but no, hey that's I, just I the nature that. of you if that's kind of been my hesitation to to do anything different is like is anyone going to watch it it's going to be it's going to be interesting um 
But no. Well, if you don't take these leaps of faith, though, man, like if I, I just st stuck to doing Dark Souls videos, like I still would be a nobody. And like yeah, okay. if I hadn't have started, like, you know, treaded into other waters of content, like I would have, yeah, I just would have been stuck making uh, Dark Souls videos. And that I mean, is not first, a very pleasant thought. My first ever video was uh, for a mod on GTA 4. So there's a bit of oh, wow. background history on me. So like you, I basically wanted to be every other gaming channel in the world i feel like when we're all kids that's all we want to be we just want to be a <laughs> gaming channel and it just never happens yeah because like i don't know i think with gaming is like you have to be really lucky like someone is gonna have to really spot you out or you can just skip the queue and uh get really high tech equipment so that you can play all the newest games and have absolutely crystal clear quality uh, video and audio yeah yeah no, nah, but um, so that's cool. Obviously, that you were inspired by people like your movie sex and things like that. Um, I don't mm. know, like who else was your inspiration going into YouTube? Like, well, that's kind of changed over the years because, like, I've I've always liked um, a specific um, analysis channel called Co, and he um, has like well he's been doing this for flipping years and is still doing it but like he just does um because i'm a big fan of stanley kubrick movies like uh 2001 a space odyssey spartacus and oh, okay. um uh the shining and he does a whole load of uh, analysis videos on that so he's another one of my um influences i would say i've got like a uh, I've, I've always had on my channel though like a list of channels that like inspire my work yeah. so i'm just going to bring that up now so i can just read it to you so yeah yms is right at the top yeah, um i've got john tron matthew mitosis and yeah collative learning and the needle drop as well even though he talks about music he's still got a really nice critical insight so it's kind of like all the ogs really in terms of the ogs the indeed yeah critical thinking uh, that's good though. Like, obviously, I think we all get our inspiration from somewhere. I don't think anyone mm -hmm. just comes onto the website and just, you know, is is automatically a great YouTuber. I feel like you've got to look at what other people are doing and say, how can I do this differently, or how can I put my own spin on this? Uh, but um, moving away from YouTube a little bit. So, how what what to ask as well? How did you get into Doctor Who itself, the show? Uh, when I was, uh, God, I would have been probably about nine years old when the Chris Eccleston series came out on TV. Oh, and my first uh, experience of Doctor Who was being absolutely terrified at all the human beings unzipping themselves and becoming giant green monsters. Mm. And of course, you know, in hindsight now, it sounds absolutely ludicrous. And you watch the episodes again and they look kind of goofy, but at the same time like that that was what made an impression on me when i was really young and i've been kind of hooked on the show ever since i mean obviously I, I know i do have a lot of negative things to say about the show but i still come back and watch it every year because it's this it's kind of the same as black mirror I, I love these anthology tv shows that you'll always have something new uh, or something different each week uh, which is you know something that like game of thrones or breaking bad don't quite have um but so like yeah my my experience has just been from from watching it pretty religiously up until about 2011 when uh, matt smith was around which was when i was doing my gcses and a levels and i kind of just ignored it because i was i thought i'd grown out of doctor who yeah, and i think i can definitely yeah. say i have but like at the same time i I think about that kind of blank period where I wasn't watching Doctor Who and then I came back into it and expecting Peter Capaldi's reign to be supreme, but obviously that never actually happened. So no, I, I got my hopes up. And... to be a return to like sort of more classic Who in that way, like yeah. an older Doctor, a bit more serious, you know, grounded type thing. Uh, I went through a similar phase as you though. For me, that phase where I thought I'd grown out of Doctor Who was Series 9. Like, okay. when I saw uh, Peter Capaldi come in on the tank and the sunglasses and the guitar, I was just like, nah. <laughs> you know, you know, this, that was kind of when I sort of fell out of love with the show for a while. Um, okay. Just because I didn't feel like it connected with me like it did when I first started watching it. Um, mm -hmm. 
and obviously uh, I caught sort of like looked with one eye at series 10 but I never really got fully into it to be honest the mm-hmm. whole Capaldi era as you've said like was a bit of a disappointment for me um, you know I was expecting something a lot different from what we actually got you know, um, but obviously your reviews were probably, I probably enjoyed your reviews more than I actually enjoyed watching, in all honesty. Um, and that's just because, you know, the, the, the direction of the show didn't appeal to me at the time. But um, mm-hmm. they, they seem to, well, the, that, this is another thing though, is that it is pretty directionless now. It's like oh, they yeah. kind of, it felt like there was a bit of intention to the earlier series, but now it's just kind of, let's 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 see if we can repeat it and repackage it every single year because it's the only thing that's that young people are watching tv for anymore yeah. like broadcast tv especially and it's kind of the only thing that the bbc has that they could milk anymore as well because yeah you know they sold off a lot of their bigger shows to other other you know broadcasters um, yeah but with doctor who i feel like um obviously at least with moffat he had a distinct sort of style and presence, and sort of mm. you, you knew it was a Moffat story. I feel like one of the biggest problems with obviously the, the current iteration, and we'll get onto this in a bit, is that it just doesn't mm. feel like anything. It doesn't sure. feel like it has a style or a tone. And you could say, mm. well, that's just because it's the first series, but I think for me, like, if you look back at Rose, for example, it's immediately obvious what RTD was going for. Whereas. Mm with Chibnall, I've got no idea still, you know? Um, but that's well, they love doing. kind of building up that suspense, don't they? They'll they'll kind of say, oh, they're a new showrunner. Let's see what they have to offer. And they'll, because they know that they can potentially be uh, running this uh, train, or yeah, driving this train for several years, they'll basically just keep teasing never endingly and never actually conclude anything and yeah. that that is kind of a problem with tv in general more than perhaps like doctor who specifically but i think that like when shows go on for normally more than five seasons that kind of um direction does falter for yeah. sure as, as you said like um i remember watching your i think it was your uh, well enough in time Dr. Falls video you were saying mm. about how you know after so long of being teased about the regeneration the kind of the novelty of it kind of wears off um, yeah and it's the same with the show in general like you can tease that there's more coming but like we actually want to see more we actually want to see you expand on your ideas and you know do something new and interesting with the show because in theory I've said this before it should be a show that you can do anything with like mm. there's no real limit to what you can do with it but obviously, it's feel it's felt very confined over the past few years, either by a certain mm. creative or just lack of ambition in some cases. They just don't maybe it is it. just it's the same as when uh, what's his name uh, Sylvester McCoy was the Doctor, and I think people would you know just no no one really cared about it enough to get the ratings up and the same thing has kind of happened with doctor who it's 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 even sadder though because it's the first female doctor and you know this is this is like uh for a show that's been going on for over 50 years and you know the 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 biggest probably boldest progressive kind of um step they could have taken and everything else kind of just gets put to the wayside the quality of absolutely every other element just gets quashed as a result of them you know just building up this um non-character non-regeneration of the doctor that was just there essentially to say look what a great job we've done now look at how far we've quote unquote come yeah no uh i totally agree with you um obviously um with series 11 i like i feel like i can sort of kind of understand why some people like it maybe <laughs> i feel like it's kind of one of those things with series 11 if you switch your brain off it might grab your attention for <laughs> half an hour maybe yeah. like you might be able to just sit and watch it casually but i feel like I feel like it's kind of like the polar opposites with Moffat and Chibnall. With Moffat, he felt like he was 
too uh, committed to appeasing the fans uh, and appeasing the hardcore fans with references and nods to this and that. Mm. Uh, you know, silence will fall, the cracks in time, all of that. Uh, with um, Matt Smith's era and then Capaldi, we had the return of Gallifrey and, you know, all this stuff, which if you're a casual viewer, you're not really going to care about. But then on the flip side to that, you've got Chibnall, who doesn't really make any efforts to tie it into the old show, and therefore it leaves fans who've been around for a while kind of in the dark a little bit. Uh, I feel alienated by the um, lack of connection, for sure. So we've kind of gone from one extreme to the other in that way. Yeah, Where we definitely. have one showrunner who is way too committed to appeasing fans, and another showrunner who just does not care what the fans think at all. Which is ironic, because yeah. he was a fan himself, which is the ironic mm. part about it. They picked the worst possible fan to <laughs> yeah, run the show. Um, obviously, I, I always like to cite Nitpix's his video on Chibnall, uh, that he, his original video on Chibnall that he made, summed mm. up perfectly why he was a poor choice, and I'll, I never quite understand yeah. why he was chosen. In all honesty, I mean, obviously we could. Well, he, yeah, we exactly. I, I I wouldn't even know where to start. No. Uh, with yeah, with Chib Chibnall's era will always go down as one of those ones that's just like. Because, eh, like, realistically, other than the introduction of a female doctor, what's it really going to be remembered for in f three, four, five years' time? You know? They'll, they'll remember Kablam! Will they, though? I don't no, of course they won't. <laughs> that was the only one that I gave one... Well, no, apart from the pilot, the, the woman who fell to Earth was alright, but yeah. the Kablam one was the only one that had anything, like, uh, relevant to say as well, and it yeah. wasn't even written by Chibnall, if I'm correct. No. Um, uh, episodes one to five were written by Chibnall. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine weren't. Uh, ten was because it was the finale, and Resolution was as well. So, <laughs> yeah. So six, seven, eight, and nine were all written by other people. But I... Do you know, I I was under the impression that, that it was just episodes one and two that were written by Chibnall, um, because Rose is written by um, Mallory... Well, co uh... Rose is co-written by Mallory Black. Oh, co-written. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. That's fair. Well, like, that's, that's the interesting thing as well. You can kind of tell which parts were written by Mallory and which parts were written by Chibnall if you're really looking for it. Because like, sure, yeah. there's some elements that are just dumb sci-fi stuff, which you can very obviously tell that um, was... <laughs> who wrote that part, yeah. <laughs> who wrote that part. And then there are... It just... That's one of the problems with Rosa for me. Even if you take out all the political stuff, like, and I don't want to get into that too much, but even if you take out all of that, this it's very tonally inconsistent. Like, at one point mm. you've got this real... Well, this, you know, realistic take on Alabama, and then... You've got a space races with a vortex manipulator. It just doesn't <laughs> gel. Um, no. And that's kind of the thing with Chibnall's era as a whole. It doesn't seem very clear what he's trying to go for. Mm. At, what, at some points, wh whether he's trying to go for a wacky sci-fi sort of comedic show or something serious and, you know, Oscar Beatty type of thing where they're trying to do something yeah. serious and dramatic for awards, you know? <laughs> For sure, yeah. But yeah, with series eleven, it's 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 kind of, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's honestly the best way I can describe it. It's just, eh. and you know, your your reviews. I think you know, again, they're more fun than actually watching the show. Um, I think series eleven is like when you've when you've gone through. Oh no, Doctor Who's revival can pretty much be analogous to a zoo visit. Like, you'll see the lions, you'll see the giraffes, you'll see all the cool stuff, and then you'll get onto uh, the, 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 the Moffat enclosure where they'll have all the alligators and the uh, really strange kind of uh, creatures. And then you'll go to the reptile zone for uh, Chris Chibnall, and you'll see they're all just at fast asleep, no one cares, they're unfed, and that, and then you're just the whole day is ruined because of because they weren't awake. <laughs> I, I thought you were gonna say like the farmyard bit would be chipped up with all the boring animals that everyone's already seen before. So there's a, oh, yeah, maybe <laughs> there's, a, there's a pig, there's a donkey, 
It's just a yeah, joke. and they all look really sad, and they're all just stood there like <laughs> <laughs> being chased around by like a herder or some kind. <laughs> yeah, like move, damn it. <clears throat> no, <laughs> that was a really bizarre, <laughs> bizarre analogy. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I come up with them off the top of my head. I'm here all week, folks. And that's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> how much... I've actually always wondered this. How much of your videos are scripted and how much of it is just, like, improv... Improvisational type thing? Scripted um, to the degree that, like, I will write out essentially an essay of what my thoughts are and a kind of conclusion at the end of it i'll record that like i'll literally just record me reading the whole thing and then as i'm listening to the audio back kind of chopping it up so that there's no gaps like there'll be little sentences or things that are inconsistent or don't make sense or like really and and then yeah i'll i'll get rid of them but it's it's kind of nice though cuz i mean it, it was certainly the case in some of my earlier videos where um where i wasn't as used to sitting in front of a a microphone thing um where i will have a load of outtakes as you know you mentioned harry potter as well like you know that's got a whole yeah. reel of Jeez, outtakes yeah. at the end what? and the only thing that i've got now really that's not scripted is the um yeah it'll be either something that i remove in the edit or like if i have an outtake like the, the one that stands out amongst the rest like in my black mirror my two new black mirror videos um i've got like a little kind of thing if you stick around to watch the whole video kind of thing mm. um so like that will be where that the outtakes have kind of transformed into and i would do it more but it's like i never it, it always just took a little extra time instead of just having what i wanted to say put out and instead of faffing around sorting out audio for uh mm. something that like might not even please anybody like I, I reckon most people probably would those those people that do watch to the end of the script so to speak probably don't know about some of the outtakes or uh final comments that i'll make at the end of the black mirror videos for example i just like to kind of throw in not easter eggs per se but like just things that people who are attentive enough are going to notice yeah kind of like a I don't know, it's kind of like a like a Stanley Cavie or type of thing where you're like if you like like not like one of the really obvious ones, but like one of the subtle ones where he's just sort of in the background. It's like oh, there he is. It's just like yeah, I suppose. But then again, like all of those vi all of the Marvel movies have got that like in mind. Like they know that they've got to put the um the Stanley cameo in there. Whereas like there's nothing that I ever conjure up that I think. That is going to be consistent. Apart from apart from when I used to put the word party in um, my old uh, Doctor Who videos for people to find. But apart from that, that's been it. <laughs> yeah, I think. I'm... You know about that? I think I do. Yeah, so I can remember. You know, it's it's difficult actually because I've watched your videos so many times. It's kind of like when you watch them so many times, they all sort of begin to like form together in your head. It kind of... <laughs> Wait, it's like when you watch a movie so many times and you've like got like weird parts of that movie in your in your mind, but they're all disjointed. Mm. And that's kinda of how I view content that I watch a lot. You know, it's it's all just sort of Sure. But no, I yeah. some of the jokes you have like do generally have me laughing for a good five, ten minutes. Uh, and it's oh. like <laughs> That's a long time for laughter, man. I ho I hope you're drinking plenty of to replenish your throat. <laughs> yeah, I promise I'm good. I'm good. Luckily, like with with my stuff, when I do reviews, well, I say reviews, like <laughs> the the resolution what I'm actually happy with, uh, you know. But some of my older stuff, like I'll look at it and I'll go, oh, what were you <laughs> trying to do, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like I I I don't I try and not watch all my old videos because like. It's just so, um, I, I mean, I can't really put it into words myself, but I'll just, I'll put a Jim Jarmusch quote here. He's a director, like an indie director. Um, he said that like when he's done with his movies, he 
he won't look back on them whatsoever. Like he'll just be straight onto the next project. Like once the edit's finished and it's out in the cinemas, he won't even like go to uh, special screenings or, See, or anything. Like he'll literally that. the next project. It was me. Like in my put out a video, I've got to look through it <laughs> just to make sure if I have messed up, it's not too noticeable. You know. Uh, Oh, you have to put that behind you, man. Like every time I think about that, I just go crazy. Like of all the other videos that, um, you know, I would have made before. And the thing is as well, is like, even when you do make little mistakes, it is kind of annoying because people, um, they, they, they'll be the first people to know in the comments section Yeah. and like just haunt you for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now the co comments are interesting as well. There, uh, you know, because mm. sometimes they do offer like genuine, like constructive criticism, and I appreciate that. I really do. And then some of it's just like, you take, you took time out to watch a video that you didn't like, and then just, just comment <laughs> that. Like, yeah. if, if you're not gonna like my opinion anyway, then don't watch the rest of it. You know, it's like, it's like people want an excuse to unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> but they'd have to be subscribed in the first place is the thing and i doubt oh for sure would. yeah i doubt that they would be uh, <laughs> oh, no. no it's a fair point though man because like most of my audience aren't subscribed to me at all like you know there'll be some if, if even if we're going by the raw numbers like a video that um does i don't know say five times the amount of subscribers i've got you know that most of those people four out of five of them aren't going to be subscribers and it'll probably be even a, a smaller fraction of that that are actually subscribed and it, it's kind of funny because i was uh, a little slight little tangent here i went to the youtube um headquarters in uh king's cross oh, wow. the other day and it was just for a um what was it, it was just for a meditation class like literally just a one-off thing that they they advertised and i went along to it there's only about six people there but i was like oh, i don't care i love meditation it's it's, it's my jam like uh, and it was good Very to kind point. of do it with a bunch of other people um but anyway yeah the point of that was i i got talking to this girl who was uh there and she um was saying about how every time she kind of talks to anybody because she's not like an active youtuber but she's got enough uh followers like enough presence to um be notified what you can get involved in in the youtube studio and she said that like it's so weird when you're talking to other people and the the conversation always ends up steering to how many subscribers have you got what's your numbers like, it, th that is really not where we should be starting these kind of conversations from because it shouldn't really matter the subscribers yeah it shouldn't matter at all but it was, it's kind of funny that i hadn't even thought of it like that because the only thing that i've got in common with anybody that's going to be there is youtube and that's basically my life if anyone yeah so like you can't help but wonder about these things we're up to but then you know like her she you might it might not be my business you know yeah. it's kind of weird no, this, yeah, it's fair enough. Like, the thing with with me is, like, when I went into this, I wasn't actually expecting anyone to watch. I don't think anyone, you know, expects anybody to watch. Uh, you know, my philosophy <laughs> was going into it, as long as, like, one person got something out of it, then it's worth it. If, if one person... Sure, got, yeah. You know, well, obviously, I don't know. Just, uh -huh. just sat and watched it, then that would be worth it to me, because they've got something <laughs> out of it. Obviously... I I feel a sense of validation though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm joking, but yeah, I I do really genuinely enjoy your stuff, and obviously I've said this, I think I've said this before, but the Harry Potter, your first Harry Potter review was when I started watching you, and uh -huh. I, can, I can, that was basically you know when I started looking at media more critically, because obviously <laughs> I was watching people like you and thinking about like media through a lens that i'd never really seen it before because prior sure. to that like i would just watch it for something to watch you know uh yeah like most people i suppose but um i think there's some, there was something so i think it was the humor mixed with the way you critiqued things that was just so appealing because it kind okay. of felt like you know just a normal person with it which which is what it is but it's just like a normal person saying their views and making jokes and it's just it's just fun yeah you know and i really enjoyed it obviously harry potter stuff 
was when I first got into you, and then I saw that you did Doctor Who as well, and I was like, this is my channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I've got a very nice niche little section of the audience. It's kind of a shame because, like, my last Harry Potter video was, like, it was over a year ago, wasn't it? It must have been, when are we talking, 27? No, it was tw it was last year. Huh. I thought it was uh, longer ago than that. Was, but... was that uh, Cursed Child? No, that was uh, Deathly Hallows 2. Because oh, okay. um, Cursed Child I did even before... Uh, Deathly Hallows, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cursed Child is two years ago. I wanted to ask you as well, speaking of Harry Potter, I wanted to ask you about your opinion on Fantastic Beasts. Because I personally watched the first one and went, nah, this isn't for me. You're all right. Um, mm -hmm. And I never watched the sequel, uh, Crimes of Grindelwald. And I'm glad I didn't because it just looks naff. Because <laughs> it's a shit show. That's why. <laughs> It is just an absolute disaster, the second movie. I mean, the first one I can I can sort of deal with more in that it's just more of the things that I like. Uh, I'm not really too fussed about it. And the character Jacob is just absolutely lovable. And I, I honestly, I've been meaning to make a video on it. But every time I've tried to, like, just sit down and watch it, I've always kind of struggled because it's such a meh movie that i could talk about what's good about it and what's bad about it but there's nothing about the first um the first movie that i can go really ecstatic about and i know that kind of sounds a bit like mediocre and a bit boring to be honest like yeah yeah i can understand why people would enjoy the first one because it gives you a look into the world that you didn't really see with the original like movies or books. Uh, you mm. see it a bit more from another perspective. But then, what you really get from it, you get a couple of decent characters and a few new creatures to look at. But that's about it, really. Like, Yeah, they are quite shallow, for sure. I think, though... The, the, the I, I was just going to say that like it sounds kind of polarizing of me to say like I only want to do things that I can really go crazy about or in, in a positive or negative way. Like that's the most interesting content when you've got something to say about it. If you like if you don't feel that you've got something to say about it, then that's going to show in the video, I think. You know, true. Maybe it's well, it, it'll depend on which like. uh which Doctor Who videos or which Harry Potter uh, videos I've given uh, like a final rating of five out of 10 or somewhere around that area. And if the actual quality of the review itself kind of correlates with that or not, I'd be interested to know. Obviously, I don't want to assume, but I, I would hope that you will review Series 12 because I obviously you're one of the ones that I really do enjoy watching, even if like you got to wait longer. I just do enjoy those. If you... Well, who's who's my biggest competition? Yours. Yeah, who's my biggest competition? Who do you think, it, it, like, if there was to be a review of Series 12, do you think that there's anybody that's doing, like, a good enough job or better job? Um, uh, like, I, I think of someone like Bowles Trek, because um, every time he makes a video, he just his numbers just go through the flipping roof. But at the same time, he's got a very kind of um, consistent set of uh, ratings, like or viewership, really. Um, but I'm just looking at his channel right now. I'm, I'm being really nosy. Sorry, wow. Bowler's Trek. I've never actually met you or anything, but um, yeah. I am aware of your presence. Yeah, no, no. Obviously, I've worked with, I don't know whether you saw it, but I did a collaborative resolution review with him. Oh, really? I didn't actually get that many views, but... I you know, he is genuinely a really nice guy, um, and that's one thing I want to say is that uh, you know don't immediately judge like someone's internet persona with their real life persona because they're two different things. Like sure. some people, they are just the way they are in real life. Like with me, there's not really much distinction, but with some people, it is just an act. Like I feel like with Bolt Strike, he had, he has a certain niche that he appeals to. And I'm admittedly part of that niche. I do enjoy watching Series 11 get torn apart because mm. I... Let's just say I dislike it strongly. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Yeah, you know. But no, I can completely understand. In terms of viewership, he does get a lot because he he appeals to to the masses that don't like it, and I understand that. <laughs> but I, I yeah. suppose. But uh, I I think I just enjoy yours because I think they're like very creative in the way you critique them. Well, I want to always give everything I review a, a fair chance, and like maybe that will kind of stir anybody that's ever disagreed with me about anything that I've ever said. But yeah. like I, I've never gone into like I say, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't be watching Doctor Who every year and talking about it if I didn't at least hope that something positive might come out of it. And, you know, I'm glad that I did watch series 11 because of, you know, like one or two good episodes and not like, you know, amazing or anything compared to what's come before, but still entertaining all the same. Yeah. And I'm sure I probably have no real incentive to watch it again. But no. I don't go into these things like immediately assuming that it's going to be bad. Like no, I thought I that the... Um, yeah, no, go on. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I thought the woman that fell to earth was going to be a train wreck. And it completely, like, I, I was, I had the absolute opposite. I was more impressed than I thought it was going to be. Um, but then obviously it kind of went downhill from there. But what I'm saying is like, the, the, the problem is, is that when the show has been so kind of consistently disappointing, you can't help but go into it thinking, right, well, let's just see what, bottom of the barrel ideas they've got this time yeah. and then when they do actually exceed expectations you know i'll be pleased about it yeah. but you know when the majority of series 11 is trash it's hard to really find anything positive at the end of it yeah and then um, i'd like to say this just for myself like and you know for people watching i did go into series 11 with an open mind i'm often because i've obviously i've made some similar videos to bullstrek and stuff like that because i do share a lot of his views on series 11 but that's just kind of natural but i do sort of gain a stigma of being things like bolstrack junior i think that's yeah. the one thing that I've, I've been described as and to be honest i did go in with an open mind i didn't just go ah it's a woman i'm gonna hate it no i i, I genuinely you know went into a woman who fell to earth with an open mind mm. and it wasn't bad i just found it meh so i thought this has got potential they could build on this but they just didn't really. Uh, nah. And then the rest of it just kind of got worse from there. Uh, <laughs> I will say though, I kind of enjoy resolution, but not not because it's a good episode, but because it's just the most fun, I guess. Like yeah, I mean, I can I can appreciate that, but I <laughs> you know you I want. You've when you've seen the worst finale of a of a Doctor Who season ever, how can you follow it up with anything that can possibly redeem it? Like it's the, the, it's beyond the point of Christmas specials have never been any good anyway. Yeah, that's true. I honestly wasn't expecting to be perfectly honest, and there's a little, little beacons of light in there, but really it's just like cloud of darkness hovering over my head <laughs> that's that's quite that's quite a perfect way to sum up the entire production of series 11 and probably chibnall's <laughs> era it's just kind of the dark cloud like you can you see that there are some ideas trying to get out but they're just like covered in like smog yeah like bradley walsh if he was given to some like if he if, if he was in a different series he could be one of the best companions he could be like you mm. know like a new wolf in you know and be like this hugely iconic, memorable character, but instead he's mm. written by Chimble, and he's kind yeah. of just, uh, you know, sort of relegated to old man in the TARDIS tropes. Yeah, yeah. And not much more than that, which is kind of a shame, because I feel like Bradley Walsh in particular deserves more than that, because he's Bradley Walsh. He's <laughs> he's just like a yeah. big name in Britain, I suppose. Uh, so I felt like he deserved more. Uh, the rest of the cast not really that big though like I, I just from my point of view like i've never like it, if somebody said to me bradley walsh is going to be in the new doctor who series i would just say who's bradley walsh really 
but you know now that i've i mean like now obviously i know who he is but like before the show like uh, none of the names when they announced the companion names none of them stood out to me whatsoever so i was kind of hoping that they would be nobodies but then it just turns out that he's the he's a host of a game show isn't he yeah he's the host of a game show and he's done a few like other things as well but yeah other than that basically that but bradley watch was the only one i knew from the chase to be honest um, okay. Bradley Walsh was the only one I knew going in. Everyone else I didn't know, and I was, you know, I was willing to give him a chance. And to be fair, Tozin has definitely improved across the series. That's one thing I do want to say, is that Tozin has definitely improved. He started like, <sighs> like I'd say in Resolution, he actually showed some emotion, like, you know. I don't know, man. Like I. It's, he's he's just written badly that is the all of them written badly and you can't have like good performances if you can't even believe the words that come out of their mouth yeah no no i understand that i think yaz is definitely the worst companion to the point where i think it was who was it, yeah. was it samuel davis he made a joke about how she's literally a ghost and like like no one can see here except the main team <laughs> Um, but yeah, she's definitely the worst one. And I, yeah, it, it does extend to the rest of the cast. Like, they're just not developed at all. It's kind <laughs> of like Baby's first Doctor Who. If you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. It's like you've got the Doctor who's waving his Sonic around and you've got, you know, all these perfect companions that never do anything wrong. It's just like, it's not challenging to watch. If they actually had some conflict, it might actually be interesting, but they don't. They'll just one big happy family and that's just not that interesting yeah you know obviously you called them the famous family which i love i think that's a great name for them no, I, I can't even remember saying that my god yeah. <laughs> that was in your resolution review so oh right well then yeah I... way too much attention like I say, that's what i mean man like once my video is out i try and forget about it as much as i possibly can uh i i i, I can remember i i refer to them as the amazing box tickers because uh obviously they tick each of them tick a different box and some of them tick multiple yeah. boxes <laughs> you know and i just, yeah yeah series 11 is interesting because it failed <laughs> And that's the thing yeah. that probably be remembered for as being the failure. Uh, series <laughs> twelve. I don't want to say is going to be a complete disaster, but it does seem like they're going to try and do some course correction. Uh, you can keep your fingers crossed. I feel like it might be too little, too late at this point. Yeah, it's not like they can even an attempt to redeem series 11 is it just sounds like a disaster waiting to happen yeah. and if they do like i would be far happier if they just kind of didn't mention it like reference to it whatsoever series and they just had it, yeah yeah if series 12 was kind of its own thing that was disconnected from everything else that would have been great or oh, that that could be great. Like I just, I think I'm at the point now where like we had enough of Moffat's continuous continuation, for lack of a better phrase, and then everything continued and everything's been stripped away, and you've actually got nothing left. And obviously, build. But at the same time, if they're if they're just trying based on the the success, why even bother? Um, if they've got like uh, some new interesting things up their sleeve, which with a group of four is not very likely to happen, um, but yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. We will. But the thing, the, the, the most telling thing to me was that they made a huge deal about the Jadoon coming back. Like five years ago, would anyone really care if the Jadoon came back? <laughs> Probably not. Like they made it, they made it sound like it was such a big deal, like a classic monsters coming back to Doctor Who. It's like, whoopee, the Jadoon. What a yeah. Well, it's the it's the BBC the BBC's costume cupboard getting a little bit full up, and they're thinking, right, you're either going to use this next year or we're throwing it out. And they just added a bit of hair on top, like it's a new character. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like. 
I, you know, I, I don't go into any new series of Doctor Who wanting it to fail. I don't think anyone, any fan does that. Uh, but with series 12, I'm going to watch it. And it might be slightly better, but like, I doubt it. I highly doubt it, you know? I think I'm going to be a bit more on the ball with it. Wait, when's it, when's it coming out? I think it's spring 2020. Oh, so we have actually got quite a while. To... Yeah, it's quite a while. But there's rumours about a Christmas special going around. So, mm. um, you know. I mean, obviously the New Year's thing didn't do very well. Because I, I think it was like the lowest rated new... Like, the, low, the lowest rated new Who uh, sort of special ever. So... Yeah, no, they they often did get a lot of people to watch it because, you know, what the hell else is on on Christmas Day? Yeah, well, apparently, yeah, as I said, apparently it's the lowest rated one. So, that's... Cl- I, I know that people like to say that, oh, Series 11 did great, but that's not a good statistic to have. So, clearly, I, I don't know whether it was the New Year slot or whether it was just general disinterest, but... I think yeah, it might burn off after yeah. The, the I mean the interest is probably at an all time low anyway. Yeah. I well actually that might not be true because like I know that there are a lot of people that do really like the show. Whether you know it, whether they think that series eleven is the best or the worst show ever, like there's still a very strong kind of fan presence online for sure i think a lot of people are probably are probably yearning for more of it but like your average joe is probably not gonna be that interested like unless you're somebody like me and you that have been watching it like since the very start why even bother picking it up now at this point like they always try and do this as well like especially with series 10 and it was just so cringy where they just Let's try and get more people in. Let's assume that nothing has happened before this series and it can be its own thing. And then they did the exact same thing with First Female Doctor. And I don't think people are buying it anymore. I just think that a nice long hiatus replaced the entire cast and crew and just give it another try in 10 years or so. I reckon that will probably... I mean, maybe a reboot would probably be the best stance at this point, like... Like kind of what we had in two thousand and five, like just a yeah. revival of it with thing. Now that I think about it, though, like imagine, I mean, I don't know if you're a big fan of the new Star Wars movies, the revival of I'm not Star a Wars. Fan of them, but I've watched them. But yeah, go on. It's but it's like I think that they are gonna have kind of problem if they do try and reboot Doctor Who, like. It's especially if they only do it like after about 10 years because that was how long there was a gap between Star Wars Revenge of the Sith and uh, Force Awakens and I've not been particularly happy with either the um, episodes 1, 2 and 3 or 7, 8 and well 9 to come yeah. I just think that if they did want to break the um break Doctor Who off for a little bit, maybe they should give it an even longer wait and see how, maybe like... like... Decades, maybe. Just, like... Just... Well, I'm just thinking more on the lines of special effects because the BBC's been hacking away at the at Doctor Who's budget. Well, I don't even know if they've been hacking away. It's just well, stayed the same. Well, it it's just to have an increase for Series 11, but I haven't really seen it. Like no, it, it, it feels cheaper than what we had in series ten. In fact, I would argue yeah. that some of it looks worse. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I mean. Like the the budget should be is is irrelevant at this point because you know they're obviously going to keep throwing money at it. But if they have got if they've just got a bunch of hacks that are running it, soaking up the money instead of actually using it to um, make a decent series. But that's what I mean. Like the the. The special effects in 20 years for a Doctor Who will look 
even more incredible than like because when 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 it when the revival started in 2005 i can pretty much testify to the special effects looking amazing at the time but you look at them now and they're pretty obsolete so you know imagine if that if that's what 15 years does to a tv show give it another 15 and we'll see what the show looks like then because mm. i can i reckon they could get really um sort of uh sh what would you call it expanded universe type thing like with doctor who because it could just get so big um it has the potential to be really big but i just don't think it will be with the way that it's currently managed yeah yeah i've, I've said this before i don't think the bbc is the right place for it anymore like i know that people get epic arms when you say that like oh i can't get it off the bbc the bbc was you know the one that made it but you know the BBC's got rid of a lot of things, and in a lot of cases, it's actually improved for other shows that they've they birthed and then they got rid of. Obviously, I think The Voice does pretty well on ITV and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, obviously, I'm not saying that the Doctor Who's the same thing, but like, I feel like it would be better on something like Netflix. To be honest, it doesn't have to be Netflix necessarily, but you know, something with a bigger budget and maybe. A more create like like a writing team that's entirely new oh i don't know man like i think about Net netflix's influence on black mirror and it well, i don't, it's, I don't think that's netflix necessarily but a service like netflix but it's still a massive risk though isn't it because like even if you handed it off to another company like itv it is going to look way worse and the budget might get slashed even more you know we we can't guarantee anything to be a success whether it's with the bbc or not i just uh, i think that the um it's 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 a it's a gamble all the same i don't know maybe it's just because i don't like the maybe it's just because i don't like bbc really anymore, but... <laughs> no they, they have got a bit of a tainted reputation now yeah they do um but with with doctor who again we'll just have to wait and see but there does yeah. seem to be a trend with with media at the moment like in terms of the big franchises in terms of sci-fi they'll sort of get a bunch of steam and then they'll just sort of slowly die a few years later yeah i mean we see we see like you said you mentioned star wars earlier i i quite enjoyed uh episode seven i know some people don't like it they think it retreads too much from new hope but i personally enjoyed it as someone who was never that into star wars anyway i enjoyed them but i'm not like you know, a mega fan like some people are. Um, sure. Not like I am with Doctor Who anyway. But I quite enjoyed Episode 7. Episode 8, I thought was good when I left. And then I was just like, yeah, that really wasn't too good, was it? <laughs> it was just like, no, it really wasn't. And now we've got Episode 9. And it doesn't, it feels like they don't know what they're doing with a lot of the big franchises. Like, obviously, no. we see it with Star Wars where it's going back and forth between directors. Uh, DC just been doing whatever they want for years. Uh, Marvel's been the only one who's been consistent in terms of big franchises, I would argue. And even they're sort of, you know, you could argue that they're becoming a bit stale now after Endgame, like where you go after that sort of thing. But, you know, sure. perhaps we'll see a time when the franchises really start to get steam back again. And I do think that uh, of... maybe. I do think that part... I'm just more like uh, sorry, man. I carry. No, no, you go. No, you go. <laughs> I was just gonna say like I'm so done with like franchises anyway. Like I yeah. I managed to sit through the entire Marvel series, and like I'm just after Endgame. I was just like right. I never have to watch those movies ever. And that was literally all I felt like. I felt like I, I just consumed the package and I was like, right, good. It's now sat in my belly and it'll disappear forever. Yeah. But like there's other stuff that like I watch or keep up to date with that aren't like franchises that I get far more out of. Like if I watch um, something that gets recommended on HBO, like take uh, Chernobyl, for example, which became the number one rated show on IMDb at one point and it's it really deserves it you know it's yeah, like it's almost like you can tell it. it's almost like you can tell when these shows are going to be good or not but at the same time you know you can't guarantee that i suppose it's just you know media is so vast and never ending now that it, 
it's hard to kind of keep track with things that are actually enjoyable and whether they've been kind of just concocted to make a make a quick buck yeah no that's definitely true um it just seems like a lot of the franchises at the moment are pretty directionless um like they don't know what they want to do like ghostbusters is another example of that obviously we had the terrible remake in 2016 Mm. um and now we're getting a proper ghostbusters 3 apparently really apparently yeah i I don't have you not heard about that oh god well i'm glad i've heard about it now i'm not i'm i won't go and see that in the same way as i won't see ghostbusters the female version like um i think that's the thing they'll try thing into a franchise just for the sake of not making anything new and just reusing all all the costume cupboard kind of yeah, things no, yeah. you know what i mean like it's the same with doctor who they'll just it it's just one big recycling process now instead of um creating anything new sony is pretty much the worst as well they basically because obviously sony owns ghostbusters and they just released mm-hmm. a new man in black movie which is apparently tanking uh so yeah i heard sony's barely afloat i think i really think it's only spider-man keeping them alive to be honest. But they still get people going into the pictures, though. That's the weird thing. Like, even though they are kind of generally considered to be a bad uh, company movie-wise, you know, they, they, they're they not really even fussed, I reckon. Like, Sony as an entity does not care about the movies that it's producing because they're making money, you know, all over the place selling uh, tech, selling games, selling stuff that is just far more... Um, influential interesting modern trendy all those words than um than the movies that are produced like people will still go and see it but they've it 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 really does amaze me that you know a company really kind of could be saving money out, out of making these movies but because they are still generate because people are still going and seeing these movies they don't that's more money to them. Why, why, you know, what, why stop when, you know, what they see as a financial good, you know, despite everyone else seeing it as a like critical bad to them, they don't care. I don't think so. Yeah. Sony as an entity probably does not care at all. But like, I I think that some of them are are losing money. I think the new Ghostbusters lost money that the female one I want about uh, men in black apparently did do well. So, Maybe we are starting to see the decline of Sony Pictures, but they are one of the studios that I would want to be bought out by somebody else. Not necessarily Disney. And maybe let Disney have Spider-Man just completely. Uh, Disney's just going to swallow up everything eventually, yeah. man. Disney will just... And like, all the laws that prevent Disney from getting any more, they'll just buy all the laws. Well, yeah, they, they, they'll they buy out the, the government before they are able to do anything like that. Will they be will, will be the government. Deck. Yeah. With a giant money pool where they've got different money pools for, for Marvel and then obviously, oh, the terrible Disney remakes. What are your opinions on those, by the way? I've always wondered the remakes. Uh, anyone's in specific? Uh, just the entire practice of it, really. The idea of well, uh, an animated movie and remaking it in, in live action. In the exact same uh, kind of vein as I was saying previously, that it's just a matter of recycling because, yeah. you know, if people are going to go and see it, that, you know, there's, uh, if you can make money with the smallest amount of expenditure, th- of course they're going to do it. And it makes total sense from their point of view because like they practically own every single one of these things down to a t now and if they can if if people do want to go and see a a hyper version quote unquote of uh, aladdin of lion king whatever dumbo fine i i honestly don't care i've got the copies of the uh, original movies and i like them just as much i just refuse to pay more money for exactly the same thing so I I don't have an opinion in the sense that I don't I I haven't watched any of them because yeah. I I've got no reason to and That's I just enough. outright refuse to. Me, from my perspective, it's just kind of worrying that it's sort of the creativity of Hollywood just seems to be running dry. It seems to be that anything that's not a Marvel movie or a Disney movie in general is just not doing that well. 
Um, no. Uh, so, obviously, we went quite a bit off topic there, but it's it's good <laughs> because obviously, I know that you're into your filmmaking and stuff because you've said before that I can remember in your school reunion review you pointed out one of the inconsistencies. I think it was when Rose was in the diner uh, and Ten was talking to Sarah Jane and she was like eating. And like one in one frame it was there and in one frame it wasn't. I can remember. That. Oh yeah. Like you said, ah, in- interesting. I, I, I. But um, the uh, yeah, no, that is definitely my thing. The c- continuity that's that's called where yeah, like they'll continuity. have several different shots that um have different props in different places. Uh, there's normally like somebody hired to make sure that doesn't happen. So when that kind of thing, you can point to continuity, Edith Blyton, whatever. <laughs> you know? yeah. Nah, but um, I like. I mean, you know, with Doctor Who, I think Doctor Who for me was kind of when when you see it failing, it's the one that hits hardest because mm. it's been the one I've been attached to for the longest. Like, oh, what school reunion? Oh no, I just mean in terms of like Doctor Who, like the state it's in now. Oh yeah, it kind of hurts the most because that's the one I've been attached to for the longest. It's kind mm. of like I don't know, like a. I don't. I can't really describe it. It's kind of like how, when you know somebody, and you can just tell that they're, they're not happy or they're not in a good place, and it's just kind of depressing, you know. Oh, and that you can't do anything about it. Yeah, no, I I completely get that. That's that's where the urgency in my uh, critique comes from because it's like when you when you've been reviewing it since twenty fourteen, and you know you're. It's it's one thing to point all these things out and make your own form of entertainment out of it, because that's basically what this has become now. Yeah, and I'm cool. sure that nobody in the production team of Doctor Who cares about did it suck, you know? Yeah. Um, it's for a different group of people entirely, and it, I'm glad that it's kind of became a monster of its own instead of um, like a, a call to arms or anything like that. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely true. Like, as I've said, I enjoy watching your stuff more than I watch, like, I enjoy watching the show at the moment. And that's been true ever since about 2015, really, so... Sure. You know, uh, obviously, with Doctor Who, there's there's always going to be peaks and troughs with a, ship, with a franchise that's been going on for so long, but at the moment, it just feels like either, either people... There's very much a war at the moment in terms of the fandom-wise. Obviously, I know you say pretty... You stay pretty separate from it. But obviously, there are sort of there is sort of a divide there, not just uh, because of the show itself, but just because of the casting and the politics and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, it has become unfortunately uh, divisive and hostile. I would definitely say as well. Uh, to, to be fair, though, like the. Um, most of the time, like I'll I'll get fairly positive feedback from like my reviews, unless it's something that I've made a genuine shit show of, like uh, the Heaven Sent video. But that was made in a time when I was producing those videos in a day. Like this was nothing, you know. Now, like where I take about a whole week to uh, formulate my thoughts, get them into something cohesive, and actually take my time making it what it is instead of yeah back then when i was like right i need to get this out today and i would just spend it you know a whole day making a video and it it was never (laughs) sorry that's basically me right now like that's oh making it okay in terms of videos but yeah no i just like obviously because as well i do mention uh, the political stuff in I think that's probably why you don't get much of a backlash because you do you try and stay pretty neutral when it comes to that sort of thing in terms of the politics behind the show at the moment. Uh, well, I can kind of get behind both points of view though. Yeah. That's the thing. Like I can totally see why somebody would be unhappy with 
them changing the gender of a character that has just been long established to be male for reasons that seem to yeah be purely political mm. but on the other hand like i i would be lying if i said that i hadn't seen any kind of uh backlash of the unsavory sort on social media in my own comment section yeah. even on my discord server you know there's just so many people out there that have just got this sort of fervent um just f well just fury at the whole thing and i'm yeah. just think sat there thinking this is just a tv show that this is literally just a tv show and everyone is getting their knickers in a twist because yeah. of the yeah. politics of it because it's just pushing people to both sides instead of just remaining consistent and you know you'll have people that want it to be as progressive as possible and on the other side you want it to keep with the traditional way that it's always been but yeah. you know that both sides are flawed in their arguments and i like i said prefer to just take a step back and and just say that this is a tv show mm -hmm. i might have a lot of passionate things to say but i'll save it for a video you know that mm -hmm. that's part of the entertainment and of the content i think no that's fair. that's definitely fair enough um and i would agree that it is just a tv show at the end of the day and as much as passionate as any of us get we have to remember that um yeah that it is just a tv show at the end of the day um but i do think it's telling that from from what i can see anyway the majority of people don't enjoy the series from what i've seen there are there are it does definitely have its fans but i do reckon that more and more people are saying I wasn't a fan of this. And that could be for a variety of reasons. But I think, you know, maybe the BBC will start to have to look at the fan reaction and maybe say, might I mess this up a little bit? Because... I'd be very interested to know what, um, if people, or what the ratings are for Game of Thrones Season 8 compared to Doctor Who Series 11. Just because both have kind of been rather uh poorly handled by their producers but at the same time you know i think that there's there's positives and negatives to even those uh like it's especially game of thrones you know i know a lot of people really 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 season eight but you know i think that it had a lot of positives in there still the same but i'm looking at the numbers right now and the finale of game of thrones has 4.2 really? doctor who's uh yeah yeah it's, it's it that it just got completely lambasted, man. Like it was crazy. But Do Doctor Who's series eleven ratings, the finale of that is five point five. So it's still higher, but Game of Thrones has been like the it's been rated on IMDb about a hundred thousand times on Game of Thrones, whereas Doctor Who has only got about two thousand. But I will say, I think the BBC looks at over twenty eight days. I think that's how they get their ratings. So they. Oh, I meant like um, actual uh, num numerical ratings, not the amount of people watched it. Like I'm on IMDb looking at like w what number people have given it oh, um, right. out you of mean, ten. Uh... Yeah. But it's, it's they've just both been received rather poorly, I think, and a lot of people are probably just having this kind of mistrust in uh, the traditional uh, studio systems that kind of been existent to make these shows for so long and now that Netflix and things are coming along it's it's, it's all changing and um, it's very exciting as well. The big corporations are terrified of smaller creators for, to an extent. I feel like they're not they don't see us as a threat but they do sort of see us as a concern because you think how big YouTube as a platform has become over the last 10 years uh, mm. you see how like money how much money it generates and you know it must have some people scared because to an extent we say the stuff that they wouldn't want people to say if you know what I mean because we're, we're not afraid to critique something if we feel like something's bad that and, is true whereas as you oh, said, sorry, go on. Uh, 
with the BBC themselves, they never really critiqued any of their own stuff. When they released like things like the Fan Show and Confidential and stuff like sure. that. Sure. But we say the stuff that they might not necessarily want to hear or for them for their audience to hear, you know? Well, yeah, they've got the thing is they've got like um seriously tightly woven contracts that will probably I mean I this is just speculation. I don't actually know if they do or don't, but you know, they're they it's like when um uh when season eight of game of thrones was coming out most of the cast like couldn't hold it back like you know some of them so even the the main two were what what did you think of the of season eight uh, it's disappointing or uh, uh they, they'll sort of sarcastically say best season ever um and it's all it's so awkward to watch them sort of say this but it's like um you know they're, they're they're under obligation to not say anything negative. I understand that because they're getting paid to do it. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like um, uh, anyone who just happens to be a consumer has a right to complain about something all the same. Mm. And I don't think that they are as uh, I, I wouldn't say that they are concerned. They're more concerned about um, uh, say something like. Um, they're more concerned about the, the preemptive disasters, like uh, Sonic, for example, which is still going to come out uh, only because they know that it made such an impression on the public that they are they are already signs appearing, you know, in their eyes because they know that whether it's a disaster or not, people are going to go and see it. Because of the disaster, we've now come to the point where people do honestly prefer to see uh, things, not well, not prefer, they would just rather watch something that's absolutely terrible, or absolutely amazing, than something that's in the middle. Yeah. Uh, just, just to get their thoughts out about it and stuff, and rant about it on Twitter or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Sonic is actually a very good example because the backlash to that was so big that the studio even responded which was i think that shows the power of the internet but also mm. i think it's almost concerning that it kind of shows studios that if we mess up we're gonna get even more exposure so that's kind of a worrying thing like if companies intentionally start making stuff bad just to get the hate and just to get the uh the attention on social medias and stuff. Yeah. Like, obviously an example would be Game of Thrones. And mm. obviously Doctor Who as well. Despite it being uh, bad in our opinions, you can't deny the amount of coverage those, those two shows have got. Um, sure. That could well be lucrative for the company. So... Yeah. At a certain point, you've got to worry, like, is this going to affect entertainment in the future like another example would yeah. be like the emoji movie like that mm. was a terrible movie but it actually did quite financially well yeah and it's kind of worrying but yeah <laughs> well this is the thing though man like i i don't know if people genuinely um go to the uh cinema as much anymore like unless they are just um it's it's more like sports than um just going to the movies anymore because you pick whatever uh company or film franchise you like the most and you'll go and see those movies over all the other ones so anything that isn't branded with the uh with the sony logo with the marvel uh stamp you know anything like that that isn't that doesn't come under those windows or or the Disney umbrella, shall we say? You know, is just going to get completely thrown to the wayside, and I just think a lot of cinemas are going to kind of suffer as a result because there's just not enough choice, and, and it's it's also the kind of mentality of pick a side and um, we'll go from there because Marvel and DC people are constantly at each other's throats even though the general consensus is that the Marvel movies have done a better job than the, the uh, DC ones 
Yeah, which is, which in my opinion is like accurate in terms of movies. Like if you're just looking at them critically, if you've got no investment in either company or either brand, the Marvel movies are just more consistent. Yeah. Um, but that's like actually that's one thing. Like, what what is your opinion on DC? Where well we got what's to- your opinion on what? Sorry, you kind of broke up there. DC. Uh, same thing. I I don't have an opinion really. I- I love the Dark Knight movies, but beyond that, I haven't gone out of my way to go and see any of those movies because I'm I'm not even that big on superhero movies. Like I only watched the Marvel ones because um, of where it was all building up to, and because my, my mate Max was like, um, y- "You've just got to watch them from the start," and and that was the mistake that I had made was just picking and choosing which ones I wanted to watch, and they obviously didn't quite slot together as nicely as when you've seen all the other movies. So in that sense, I'm more of a Marvel fanboy, but at the same time, I, I really couldn't even care less about either of them, really. Okay, it's just yeah. superhero. I'm, I'm so done with superhero like movies, man. I've got you here because, you know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. uh, but closing, like, closing, like, thoughts on just stuff that we've talked about, really. Um, the one thing I want to say that I hope people got out of this is that, you know... Doctor Who itself is always going to have its down points. For me, this is one of the biggest down points that we've seen for a while. And this is coming from someone who stopped watching in Series 9. <clears throat> um, but it might get better in the future. We'll, we'll just have to see. And, you know, whatever happens, I'll watch your reviews. Um, <laughs> because I find them interesting. Unfortunately, the only ones I haven't really watched are the Black Mirror ones, because I haven't really watched Black Mirror that much. But other than that, I pretty much watched most of them. <laughs> You've got to watch Black Mirror, man. It is literally one of the best TV shows on Netflix. The problem, though, is I'm kind of I'm kind of pondering on watching it because I've been told by so many people that it's great that I'm like, if I watch it now, am I going to have these inflated expectations of it? Oh, well, yeah, you might do, but, like, even if you just watched the first two seasons, like we're talking seven episodes seasons have seven episodes. This is how small the whole thing really is. And because it's like, um, imagine it more like if at Christmas you were handed, uh, say about 20, 30, very small presents or you had three very big ones. Yeah. Black Mirror is kind of like that. You prefer the kind of um, the larger uh, presence or like the kind of bigger, grander ideas that each episode sets out. And it's just far more satisfying than having to slog your way through a, a 20, 25 episode drama that's just uh, that basically stays the same from start to finish. Uh, and, and because every single episode is different, like, if you like Doctor Who, man, you're going to love Black Mirror. I do definitely have to give it a watch. Uh, it's, it's been, it, there's so many things on my list at the moment that I just don't get through. I feel like that's an issue with all these different streaming services and films. Yeah, you're a bit spoiled for choice, for sure. I just did, like, not enough time in the world to watch it all. Mm, definitely. Yeah. But then, then again, like that's the whole beauty of the, the human thought process is your, the ability to kind of prioritize certain things that you think would be far more beneficial to you and uh in my opinion uh black mirror should be at the top of those priorities but you know that's just me and uh uh, also a bit of a shill for uh charlie brooker i know but um if there's one thing uh that i want your audience to come away from this thinking is that i am a human being i am seriously a human being i am not just some like machine that churns out these negative opinions for things like i try and go into these things with as neutral perspective as possible but obviously i do have to take into consideration the uh what has come before especially in relation to doctor who um that's very true you do have to formulate my thoughts especially with something like doctor who that's always changing um you know in 10 years it'll probably look completely different even if it's if if it's even still on you know yeah um but my, my, my last question for you, really, is... I just want, I've just wanted to know this for ages. Was Brian himself <laughs> actually based off of anybody? That's my question. That's my final question. Uh, 
He's not based entirely off one individual. He's kind of an amalgamation of certain people that I have known or have borne witness to their uh, obsession with uh, trying to say the books are better. Because, you know, you can say the books are better for everything. And I'm sure that, like, because reading is an entirely different experience than watching a movie. And so, and, you know, because the movies are made by completely different people to the people that write the books, you're going to get very profound differences. That's just part and parcel of it. It's like I, I, if I can talk from the point of view of Brian, though. I read, uh, what was it? Uh, the Great Gatsby, one of the most awesome tiny little novels that I've ever read, and the movie is just a total heap of crap. And yeah. it's like I I can't not prefer the book when it did so much, and the movie doesn't capture that because it's a different medium entirely. The, the you know you can't do spectacle in a book, you can't do metal to four very well in a in a film there are so many like those uh and i've kind of probably gone on a bit of a tangent now but like yeah that those, those he's based off of this mentality that the books are always better and no matter what you say the films will never have anything uh credible to them regardless you know what they do on their own two feet yeah um that's your opinion yeah. is, is also wrong yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that too is the only right one yeah uh that's good though i was always curious whether it was just an extension of yourself like if you like saw like an over exaggerated version of yourself partially like, whether it was yeah partially or whether it was based off of somebody but it's it seems like the answer you gave was it's a bit of both really yeah it's not anybody famous believe me <laughs> No, no, I just like, I, no, I just meant like it might be somebody you've met before or something like that. Yeah. But no, that's good. Um, so <laughs> I know this has been a bit all over the place, but it has been a real pleasure to have you on. Oh, it's been a pleasure talking to you, man. Yeah. It's, it's nice catching up on fans because I just end up not having enough time to talk on the Discord server. And, uh, yeah, no. Well, you've started to come back a bit now, to be fair, like with Tim's Discord. I try. I try so hard. Because I've been on the Discord server since you released your Witchfinders video. Because that's, okay. that's when I heard you mention it. I think you mentioned oh, the yeah. Witchfinders video at the end or something. I, d I did start um, promoting it. Probably um, when I did my Teen Black Mirror episodes, that was the first time I plugged it. But because it wasn't, it didn't really kind of take off until Doctor Who. Um, and every week everyone was talking about it. Like we have floods of comments and it was great. And now that Doctor Who's no longer on, it's kind of like, oh, we haven't really got anything to chat about now. So I'm going to have to find another show that I can get everyone like a, a show that's on weekly that I can get everyone on board with. Maybe after, uh, after I'm done talking about Stranger Things. Well, one thing I want to talk about on my channel, and this is like a sneak peek in the future, is Rick and Morty. Because I, uh, you, you know, because I, I, I kind of got into Rick and Morty just before it became a huge joke. So it's kind of lucky I got. Well, before. Rick and Morty, man. Like I, I watched it when the first series came out. And that was just because I knew of uh, Justin Roiland's like little online skits. And then when I found out that he was working with Dan Harmon, who was who did uh, Community, I was like, "This is like a match made in heaven." Like I, I have, and so we are, I, I've been there since the start. I'm definitely not one of these um, uh, IQ requirement yeah. kind of fans, no, but um, I still love the show. I, I, I still think season three is pretty solid. I, uh, yeah, not as bad I, as everyone I, I thought it was. The overwhelming negative reaction to season three, like some people were saying, "Oh, it ruined the show." I was like, "Really? What? What, what series were you watching?" Yeah, Maybe it's yeah. just because I watched too much Doctor Who, and I've been conditioned to believe that, you know, anything, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, like series eleven stand everything about anything above series eleven is great, <laughs> but. Yeah, that's that's fair. Do you know if Rick and Morty's got a fourth season in the work? Yeah, no, no, they've got like a bunch of. In fact, I think they're. Yeah, it's coming back November twenty nineteen. November. Oh, 
so long. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll have to watch Black Mirror while I'm waiting for that then. Yeah, good sh good idea. But then I'll wait, I'll wait for Rick and Morty to come out, and then we might get Doctor Who at Christmas, so who knows? Who knows, Who, who knows? But I can remember you saying after your Twice Upon a Time review that you were you were not going to do as much Doctor Who stuff, so I don't know whether you were thinking about not reviewing Season 11 before it came out. I think I was just done with Doctor Who at that point, and like as I kind of end up being after I review the whole series, like it just it wears you out, man. Like it, you end up thinking like, oh, I really, really don't want to be talking about Doctor Who anymore. Yeah, that's and true. um, and then like it, th that is exactly what kind of prevents me from being able to um enjoy fully making the videos on them anymore especially because like i have to consider the ad sense thing i can no longer just use clips like i used to be able to do they still copyright claimed me back in the day but that was when i wasn't doing it for money so yeah that's the, yeah, the that's the that's because mm. i can remember i did a remembrance of the daleks review ages ago and i used that scene where the dalek went up the stairs for mm. the first time, and it got copyright claimed. The irony was... Wow. The irony was, though, that I got it from another video. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, you're really screwing me over here, you know? It's like, what? Well, <laughs> well, that goes back to what you were saying about the, the corporations being scared of us having opinions, because, like, when we have an opinion on something, like, if if they've got any way they can stop us from having that opinion, they'll just take it down based on copyright so you know problem solved they can not only stand uh, yeah exactly they've got the moral high ground in their eyes and then you know any ex like i say any even if it's not copyright though like there's nothing to stop them from just taking down the video taking down your channel it's just so up in the air and hell it's i'd, I'd rather be safe and you know I, i'm, yeah. I'm going to stick to doing the stills and i don't i don't give a damn if people stop following me as a result. i don't think like, they do. i think this, the, the stills that you use actually add to your style a little bit because like right. when you zoom in on like certain like like facial expressions and stuff kind of mirrors what you're talking about i don't know i kind of like that personally it's just... you can do a lot more with a clip but like the the other thing is as well when you do have to work clips like sorry when you do have to work with clips it's like you have to get either the entire episode onto it in some form of file mm. i.e getting it from a a, a website a, a dodgy website <laughs> or uh you know screen recording the whole thing which is just even more of a new nuisance so yeah. like the uh when i get these screenshots from whatever i'm reviewing i'll i'll play it put the thing on silent, play some music in the background. So I'm just watching the whole episode or the whole movie with um, music just playing underneath it, no sounds, and just taking screenshots throughout the whole thing mm. and saving them in a folder to use for the video. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. That makes sense. I just use images off, like, Google image search uh, for when yeah. I need an image or... I'll just download a video from like one of those YouTube downloader sites. <laughs> yeah. So that's just the easiest thing to do. Um, but yeah. now, again, with. I'll continue to do Doctor Who stuff, but I'm kind of at a stage at the moment, like, what am I going to talk about? It's like, you know, I'm kind of tempted to do one of those tier list things because i got to jump on that before it dies, like everything else. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you could jump on a trend or you could try something new. Depends how many subscribers you want. I mean, I mean <laughs> enough. Like, I, I've always wanted to get to, like, 1K. That's all That's all I wanted. If, if, mm -hmm. I, if it stopped at 1K, I'd be happy with that. I just... Mate, there was at one point where I was, I literally, I, I have, I'm not very religious at all, but... You know, when I when I was first starting out, I genuinely prayed for a hundred subs. This is how ridiculously far it's come because you know I'm I'm looking at hitting a hundred thousand in like a month or two. This is like 
so crazy. I can't even like comprehend it. Yeah, I get I get a bloody actually say, "Well done, Harry. You you persevered for five years." <laughs> well done. Yeah. No, that would be. I'd be. I you. That would. I'd be happy for you if you did get one. But then again, I heard that they are quite specific of who they give them out to. So really, yeah. Apparently, if if your if your content, if they if they don't really like the content that you make, not don't like it, but it doesn't really fit with the algorithm, then they'll be like, nah, you're all right. Yeah. But I don't know. I think you'll that algorithm. Yeah, for sure. But I think you'll be okay because your content's sort of longer. So in theory, you should be okay. Well, I think yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna happen. But like, it's it's more that um, once I'm done with the third Black Mirror um, episode, because there's only three in this in this new season. Yeah, I am gonna definitely go back to doing the occasional Doctor Who video because like the people still you know they subscribed for it you know last year and I feel like uh, like I. Let, it's only because I've been uh, like since uh, when did I quit my job a month ago? Um, like up until then, you know, I'd been I'd been juggling jobs and doing YouTube and like trying to like you just get so overworked. And now that I've actually spent just under a month making content on my own time, it's really taught me to value frequent uploads because when I had a look at like the analytics for may for example when i would just yeah. uploaded those podcasts like it only got better as i started uploading more frequently mm. and the um i think the fear her video kind of kicked everything back into gear because when i um when that went up everything everyone was so happy with it and i was like yeah, I, really I honestly it. thought i was being too harsh i honestly thought i was being too harsh but uh, apparently everyone was on the same uh, train of thought as me and uh, is a total shit show episode so i'm happy well, that uh, watched it i'll admit i quite enjoyed for you here but then again i was like a little kid so it's got positive elements for sure but it's like it really it's it's nowhere near as bad as the absorbal off one but it's still bad it's still so uh, bad i wouldn't say that to channel pep man like Oh, is this the mysterious guy that that actually drew the absorber lot? He is the one. Oh, I'm gonna have to get him on the podcast. I think I've got I've got him on mine. He's he's done two episodes with me. I'm ah, late. you're late to the boat, man. You gotta. I'm late to everything, pal. Yeah, no, nah, but we're quite we're like quite like it's... quite chummy. Yeah, in terms of YouTubers, we're quite chummy. I think cool. because uh, we both sort of have similar sort of opinions on Series 11 anyway. Um, but to be fair, it's kind of bizarre to me because I've only start, I only started doing videos like six months ago. My first video came mm. out 1st of December uh, of last year. That was when I started. Mm. Okay. And even then, they were crap videos. They really were. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no answer in saying that they were crap and it was only after like new year that i actually the content that i made i was starting to feel a bit more like not proud to put out but it was like something that i was like yeah i'm okay with people seeing this you know um, yeah yeah um but it's kind of bizarre to me that if you'd have told me six months ago that i'd be doing a podcast with you i'd be like <laughs> <laughs> i know that like that sounds really strange but it's like it's kind of it's just weird man it's bizarre uh, it's surreal isn't it the whole youtube thing and the funniest thing is as well though is like you you can kind of put me down as like being like a more more of a celebrity than say your average joe just because of the work that i've been doing on the channel but at the same i am just an average joe you know like i i didn't done anything really to um deserve all of this except for the time and effort that i put in over the past few years so if you if you're really serious about it, man, just keep doing it. That's yeah. that's the only thing I can recommend. Yeah, that's, that's a that's a really positive thing to leave on. Like I just think that's a really like cool message to have. Like just keep working at it. Uh, and yeah, yeah. I, I never expected to do anything with any YouTuber. Uh, to be honest, part of it is just bugging them. Like, I don't want to sound bad, <laughs> but like that's kind of part of what it is. Like you know, just asking really nicely, like looking up, being like, please. 
please. Well, yeah, exactly. If you hadn't have asked me, we wouldn't be talk- sat here talking right now. So it, it doesn't hurt to to prod people occasionally, I don't think. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, obviously, don't... <laughs> I don't want to send the wrong message here. Don't harass anybody. Like, to don't, like, you know, constantly send messages to people. But, you know, if you're nice enough, then people will likely, at least, humour you. And, sure. And I feel like many people have done that. You know, even even nitpicks got back to me like, yeah, I'll do the podcast. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay then. There you go. You've got you've got the big guns now. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't have found that nitpicks had it not been for you. So this was kind of the one I was. I don't want to sound favoritism or anything, but this was kind of one of the ones that I was looking forward to most. Because <laughs> you, what well, you again, you were what started my transformation into the cynical man that you see. Well, not you see, but you hear before you. You know. So uh, sure. Thanks for that. <laughs> no problem. Um, uh, all right, everybody. I think that about wraps it up. Um, I don't know how this is gonna flow uh, when I edit it. Maybe it'll be the best thing you've ever listened to. Maybe it'll be crap, but. Hope you enjoyed it anyway. Uh, that's my closing message. Any anything you want to say, Harry, to to the people? Yeah, I do. Bye. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and stuff. See you later.